Hello and welcome to IT Leadership Insights by Future Processing. My name is Jarosław Granat and our guest today is Lauren Tennant, the founder of Horizon 7, a specialist sourcing advisory for buyers and suppliers. In our last episode together, we talked about the importance and best practices regarding to request for proposal. And today we'll talk about the best practices for managing a supplier. Hello, Lauren. Hi. Lauren, before committing to start a relationship with a vendor, plenty of companies of buyers think to themselves, what are the chances that it will work? Mm -hmm. So, Lauren, what are the chances? I think the chances are very good if the procurement process is done well. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of the time it's not done very well. Uh, so sourcing, outsourcing has a bad press because of that. Um, so it's unfortunate that it's run poorly and therefore there are poor results. Mm -hmm. Done well, in fact, it can, can be a very good outcome. So what can we do about it? So I think the important thing we touched on last time a little was the preparation for going mm -hmm. to market. So understanding the outcomes that we're trying to achieve. Once that's done, I think then uh, managing the contract well is really important. So there are some things around that, like um, making sure that as a client, a buyer, that you have good internal resources and processes mm -hmm. to manage the vendor properly, that the governance roles and responsibilities are all really well defined because if they're not properly defined from the outset, that's where the problems creep in. Speaking about the problems, it sometimes happens. Yes. That's so right. what do you do when you face some kind of difficulties when the supplier is underperforming? Do you have any kind of set of uh, actions to, to, to perform, to do? Yes, I think the first thing to say is that um, in my experience, and I'm asked to mediate between buyers and suppliers quite frequently when things go wrong, is that it's not always the supplier's fault. Okay. Um, so I think the first assumption shouldn't be that it's the supplier's fault, that um, a clear understanding of the facts need to be um, understood properly first, and that the root cause of the problem is if identified uh, before any assumptions around whose fault it is and what should be done because quite often there are problems on the buyer side as well mm. as the supplier side. Um, and quite frankly, when I'm asked to, to look at these things, I find that in fact, there's a difference in expectations rather than a problem with the vendor performance. Mm. Um, of course, sometimes it does happen when the vendor is underperforming. So uh, inevitably uh, that can happen. It's important that the client thinks about how they manage the vendor in a consistent way. Uh, that they um, have the right roles and responsibilities defined mm -hmm. on both sides and that governance is very strong because actually when things go wrong they should be picked up by effective governance. Mm -hmm. If uh, things are going wrong and continuing to go wrong it signals to me there's a problem in the governance structure. Uh, it's probably the least um, sexy part of outsourcing but is one of the most important pieces to get right. Um, if it continues to be a problem, then there are typically mechanisms in the contract to use to address this. So I think it's important to use those and not to be frightened of using the mechanisms mm. in the contract, things like improvement plans. Um, and my advice to buyers is that uh, if they're struggling with vendor performance, then using those things is good because it's well defined, it's well understood, and they actually become um, a requirement if you are to go on and take further action mm. against your supplier, which we hope you don't have to, uh, you have to typically do these things and give the supplier a chance to fix their performance first. Mm. So uh, I would say just crack on and use those good mechanisms and good governance to try and stop it, then address it. All right, but from your experience, are there any particular areas of disagreements between suppliers and, and uh, buyers? Yeah, it normally comes in a mismatch of expectations of okay. scope. Uh, so one party, um, typically the buyer is expecting the supplier to do something uh, and that might not be in scope mm -hmm. or a, a particular way of doing it might not be in scope. So uh, a lot of the problems that I see um, coming through in relationships between buyers and suppliers is because things haven't been well defined in the beginning of the process. So who's responsible for what, how you'll communicate, how that will be delivered and how that will be managed both sides um, is often muddy mm -hmm. and when I'm asked to mediate 
those are the things that end up being the problems that I have to sort out, not really the technical delivery, mm. frankly. Okay, so assuming that everything goes well and smooth, what would be your uh, tips and tricks to make the uh, cooperation even better on, so I think, a, on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so of course. So for me, um, starting at the very beginning, when you, if you're a buyer and you're thinking of going to market, I think you can um, make your procuring process um, a much more intimate experience between you and the suppliers. Mm -hmm. So if you work together to define the solution, then in fact you'll both be A, having a clearer expectation of what's to be delivered, but B, you'll both be clear about um, the way in which that should happen. You should spend time thinking about um, the governance and the way that works at the very beginning, at the procurement stage, because the way you work as a client needs to match the way that the supplier works. So figuring it that out at procurement is important. Um, I think on the buyer side, you have to remember that you have to invest time and energy in your vendors, mm -hmm. uh, your suppliers. So making sure you understand your obligations, that you meet those, mm -hmm. that you work with the vendor or supplier on a regular basis in a way that you're both happy with is really important. And making sure that governance works really well mm -hmm. should catch anything. And if it doesn't, then um, there's a problem in the design of the way you work together. All right, so as a summary, if we were to sum it up all together, what we talk about, what would be your list of top three items for you know, best practices for a perfect managing of IT supplier? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> so I think the, the first thing is get the procurement right. I know I keep saying that, but it's so important that yeah. when it goes wrong later, it typically is because it's, it's been um, inadequately described or the client and the supplier haven't worked through that properly together. So getting it right from day one is important um, and being spending time on the non-sexy things like governance, really mm. important. So that would be top, top tip number okay. one. Definitely do that correctly. Um, the second thing is about making sure that the governance um, is well attended and that is quality. Mm. That's quite often that I see when I go into these situations that we talk about the governance um, as it's written in the contract and then the reality is that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So making sure that the governance is followed and that everyone stays committed to it on both sides, um, I think would be my point number two. And then point number three is I think if you get into difficulties um, is not to be frightened to ask for help because it can be very difficult being in a, a relationship with someone like a supplier as a buyer um, to see the problems mm. from the inside. So having someone external look at that and facilitate a solution for you if things are getting really difficult would be my sort of third tip. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for that summary and for the whole chat. It's my pleasure. And thank you, the viewers, for watching this episode of IT Leadership Insights by Future Processing. If you found that interesting, if you found that useful, please share it and recommend it to anyone who might need that knowledge. If there is anything you would like us to discuss in the next episode, in future episodes, just let us know by sending us an email. Once again, thank you and see you next time.